One of the biggest markets for film nowadays is children's movies. It makes sense that studios would put a lot of stock in these films because children are the main driving force in the film industry. Everyone remembers going to the theater to see the new Pixar or the new Disney movie, and your parents took you because you complained for hours on end until you got to go see it. You see, marketers call this pester power. It's a descriptor for the influence that a child has on their parents to sway them to buy a toy or give them dessert or to go see a movie. Now, movies for kids are everywhere. You look at the top grossing movies of 2019 and you have to scroll to number 9 on the list before you find a movie that isn't meant for children or at least acceptable for those audiences. This promotes studios to find source material for their next big kids franchise and a lot of the time, yes, they manage to find an original script and original idea that blows up, but the easier option and the option that is used more frequently is to create a film adaptation of a popular book. Some of the biggest movies ever made are adaptations of massive young adult literature. Hunger Games, Divergent, Maze Runner, Twilight, anything written by John Green. Even the MCU movies are based off of comic books, so technically those count too. Some were treated to critical acclaim. Some we don't talk about. But these movies all had great success at the box office due to the fact that they had an established fan base even before the film went into production. As a fan of two similar franchises that had incredibly different critical and audience reception, I understand the excitement that comes with hearing that your favorite book is getting a big screen adaptation, but I also understand the disappointment when that movie is not exactly what you hoped it would be. The Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan was my favorite thing to read as a kid. I consumed those books. So you can imagine my frustration and sadness when the movie was, well, horrible. It was so bad that there was a joke in the fan base that the movie was never actually made. And then they made a sequel that was even worse. But on the other end of the spectrum, you have Harry Potter, the highest grossing series of movies ever, not including the current conglomerate that is the MCU. The novel Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was originally released on June 26, 1997 in the United Kingdom. It was followed by six more novels in the series and became the best-selling series of novels ever, with over 500 million copies sold. The Philosopher's Stone alone has over 120 million copies sold, and the release of The Deathly Hallows was so coveted that in under 24 hours it had been purchased over 15 million times. So it only makes sense to share the wealth and make some movies that are destined to be huge due to the high number of kids and adults alike that are already fans. The first film in the franchise was released on the 4th of November 2001 and made $90.3 million the first weekend, a record at the time. Now, I want to focus on that release date for a second, November 4th, 2001. The Order of the Phoenix novel came out on June 21st, 2003. At the time of the first film's release, the last three books in the series had not been published yet, meaning the studio was putting their faith and the future into J.K. Rowling's hands. And we all know how that turned out. But releasing a movie before the series is even finished is almost unheard of. The only other example I know is Tomi Adeyemi, who's signed a seven-figure movie deal after only the first book in the planned trilogy was published, that book being the fantastic Children of Blood and Bone. Stepping away from the money and business side of film, I want to talk about the fans' perspective of certain movies and books. One of the most common phrases I hear after a big book's adaptation comes out is, the book was better. You hear it about every single movie, none of them are safe, and honestly, I can't blame the people who say that. I've absolutely said it about movies if I've read the books first. I've already mentioned the train wreck that is Percy Jackson, but other movies have held the same treatment. Aragon got its big movie release in 2006, and fans of the book weren't happy. Why does the dragon have feathers? Yeah, it didn't happen in the book, did it? No, I didn't think so. Inkheart was also met with ridicule after its film release, and as much as I love Brendan Fraser, yeah, that one wasn't that good either. But it's not just bad movies that are treated with outcry from fans of the book. Even movies that are independently quite good are met with that common phrase. So why are great movies like Perks of Being a Wallflower and Me and Earl and the Dying Girl treated like a shallower version of the book? I think it's because you can fit so much content in a book that doesn't translate to the screen. The little subtleties in the way someone talks or the thoughts that flow through the protagonist's mind. A director can't quite capture those aspects of the story, and that's assuming the script does the original novel justice. But there is one more reason that readers tend to dislike adaptations, 
and that is that it doesn't match what was in their head. But with a movie, it's all very concrete. It shuts the door on personal interpretation and, well, some of us don't appreciate that very much.